Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna have some fun with infrared transfer. That's right. So back in the day, there were a couple of different options that you could use if you wanted to transfer data between two PCs. One option would be, well, floppy disks. Another option would be network. And a third option would be using a program like Laplink or Fastlinks or a Microsoft inner server to do transfers. And you could do that using a Laplink cable like I have here. So here we have a cable and actually I have another video that we have shown that. I'll put a link to it up here in the corner so you can see it. But this particular cable here has three ends on it. One for parallel, one for nine pin serial, and one for 25 pin serial. But today, we don't need that because we're going to be doing infrared transfer. So what I've got here today is, surprise, surprise for me, two Compaq LDE 5300s. And I got this 5300 a while back. I got this one more recently. And what we want to do is actually set it up and copy my standard DOS load to it. So we're going to use infrared to do that using these three different programs. If I turn the machine around, you can see here that there's an infrared port here. And naturally, there's also one on that side corresponding. So that's why we have the machines facing back to back. But fear not, we'll be able to see what's going on with this one with this screen and that, and that one there with that screen. So we'll have a look accordingly. So let's get started. So the first method that we're going to use is Microsoft Interlink. And in order to perform that, we have to have one machine running Interlink and the other running Inner Server. So I've elected this machine to run Interlink and this one to run Inner Server. So in order to run Interlink, we have to actually modify config.sys and add one line to it. And the line that we've added here is device equals c colon backslash msdos or wherever you have dos installed slash interlnk.exe. And on boot, this is going to be looking for the presence of Inner Server to connect to on another PC. So what we'll go ahead and do at this point is exit out of here and we're going to reboot this machine but before we reboot it and as an aside this is why this is my least favorite version of file transfer we actually need to make sure that inner server is running on the machine that we're going to be booting into so let's go ahead and go to the ms dos directory here and type inner server actually type it right and we can see that it's all set up and ready to connect though nothing is connected and then I'm going to go ahead and give the machine on the right the three finger salute. Make sure that I've got my two IR ports fairly well lined up here. This machine will boot up, load the interlink program via config sys, and then we'll have connectivity. All right, here we go. Starting up. You'll see it flash across the, string, the screen here. And now, lo and behold, over on this screen, you can see that we're set up. And we now have connection via port 2, COM2, with a speed of 115,000 baud, which is not particularly fast, but it'll be good for our purposes. All right, so now what this is telling us is that drive A equals drive D, drive C equals drive E, and drive D equals drive F. So what we can do is come over to this machine and if I wanted to access the floppy drive on the other machine, I could go to drive D. In this case, we want to uh, access drive C on the other machine, so we can go to drive E. And if I do a DIR command, you can see all the different programs. And as I perform that, you can see that it's reading over here. So you can see that little asterisk next to the C colon, which means that it's reading. All right, so now nothing is reading. I'm going to go ahead and make a directory on my drive C called... I'm going to just bring over um, the mouse program. And actually, that already exists. So let's, let's pick another. Let's bring over Compact DOS. All right. So now I can change into the CPQ DOS directory, and I can execute a DOS command like copy. And I can just go ahead and specify my target. And lo and behold, you can see once again that files are reading from over here and files are writing over here. 
Okay, so in the interest of your viewing pleasure, we actually uh, sped up the video a little bit just so you didn't have to see us go all the way through that. But you can see now that this is now complete and we have copied 11 files. So that's transfer method one using Microsoft MS-DOS Interlink. What I'm gonna do now is actually take Interlink out of, of config.sys so that it doesn't interfere with anything else that we're going to do. And we're gonna reboot the machine. So we'll just put a rem statement in front of it like that. We'll go ahead and reboot the machine. And we're gonna do an Alt F4 to exit over here. And we are now out of Interlink. So the second program that we're gonna to demonstrate today is Fastlinks by Rupp Corporation. And in my past video that I've done on transfer, I have demonstrated this in the past, but I wanted to show you it using this IR transfer method. So on this PC over here, we're gonna to go to the Fastlinks directory and launch Fastlinks. And we're now set up. And just to make this interesting, I'm actually gonna go ahead and upload it over the IR so that we can upload the Fastlinks program to this PC. So we're gonna choose upload and we're gonna choose COM2 as I have my IR port configured to COM2. And then from there, it's gonna give us some commands to type over on this PC. After we type those commands, we'll see it over here starting to load the bootstrap. And from there, we'll start to see files transferring. And before you know it, we'll have the Fastlinks program available over here for usage. So it's about 21% done, 30% done, and it's moving along. Okay, now that the program is transferred, we can just come over here and type FX. And lo and behold, we'll be loaded. So we can come over to split screen mode. And I like to set a couple of different options whenever I uh, perform a copy. I always like to copy subdirectories. I guess back in the day, that was not a popular option. And I also don't prompt before overwriting files, though there won't be any files to overwrite, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and save it. It'll give us an error, but it'll work fine anyway. So there you have it. So from here, we can go ahead and pick another directory to send over. Let's send over this uh, card wizard directory, which is used for purposes of configuring the PC card. So let's go ahead and hit the F3 button, and we'll start to see that transfer. So naturally, one of the disadvantages of using IR is you do have to have a direct line of sight. And in this video, we're not gonna test just how far you can go. But one thing is for certain, if you were to block the line of sight, you're gonna cause errors. So now we can see that the file has quit transferring, it's waiting. We can then move our hand and hopefully it'll pick back up again. But that's something you do have to consider if you're gonna use this method. And then again, it may not pick back up again. So when using IR, that's definitely a consideration, especially with these power cords and other things that can tend to get in the way. So that's definitely something you have to watch out for. So that's unfortunate. I think we torpedoed it. Let's try again. <laughs> and let's go ahead and just hit F3. It looks like it just was not able to recover from that situation, uh, but it is what it is. So that's definitely something to take heed and keep in mind. Okay, so once again, we sped up the video since it took some time, but lo and behold, you can see that that transfer is complete. So that is the Fastlinks program. So finally today, we're gonna to show you one more program and that is Laplink. And for this case, we're gonna be using Laplink 5 for DOS. Now Laplink does have an upload capability, but I have not had luck sending Laplink remotely. So we're actually gonna uh, go ahead and launch Laplink individually from each machine. It has been pre-copied to each machine. So for that, we're gonna to go to the LL5 directory and type LL5 on both machines. And there you can see the Laplink program. So in theory, we should have a computer name that pops up over on the right once the connection is established. And actually, there it is. So we can go ahead and select that. And it's saying, hey, the clocks don't match. Unfortunately for my LTE 5000 series machines, I don't have CMOS batteries for them and they're hard to find. If you know where to get them, let me know. I have 11 of these machines and I would love for them to have CMOS batteries. Anyway. We'll choose local time for purposes of this. 
and it's going to go ahead and set the time on both computers, which is kind of a cool feature. And from there, we can go ahead and choose drive C on the right. And we can come up here and choose drive C on the left. And we'll copy over MenuWorks, since MenuWorks is a great machine, a great program to have on a machine. And you can see here, it's actually prompting us to say, press F2, and it will copy that directory. Are you sure that you want to copy the selection from computer name to computer name? Why, yes, I do want to copy the files from computer name to computer name. So let's go ahead and tell it OK. And here you can see the Laplink interface telling you how much data has been used on each uh, machine, what the current file size is, how far along it is in its transfer, and compression is on. And we successfully copied four files 100% error free. So here's the challenge of the day. See if you can get that to say something like 91%. I wonder if there's a way to do it. Well, maybe we'll play here for a minute and see if we can make it happen. But anyway, you can see that it is 100% error free. So that is good. So that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to show you today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel. There's more content to come. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, feel free to give it a thumbs down and that'll help us decide what sort of content we make in the future. Definitely click the subscribe bell so that you'll know when we have future videos coming. Uh, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.